I love how protective okay. Captain America is of her here. He, you see that? Big Brother. Kind of like with the previous scene. He's protective of her Big Brother in the previous scene. He's protective of her Big Brother in this scene. That's a level of security and comfort. That's a place she can go to when she's tra traumatized, right? She didn't really go to him, but you know, I mean, it's, it's it's available to her. He comes to her, right? Well, of course, after Endgame, he's not around anymore. Another support system ripped away. Uh, we don't do this now. It's going to be done to us later. That's the fact. That won't be pretty. You're saying they'll come for me. We would protect. Maybe Tony's right. Another protective person. Another big brother slash lover who's protective of her. Of course, another person gets ripped away, you know? So who is he cooking a special dish for? Is he cooking a special dish for Tony Stark? No, he's doing it for Wanda. But nobody saw a romance coming between these two? What the fuck are you smoking, man? Like, it was so obvious to me. People talking about it came out of nowhere in Infinity War. You got your goddamn mind. Vision was pounded in that witch meat. Spirits. Look at their chemistry, man. This is in great shit. Sense, I, I haven't actually ever eaten anything before. So no. I, he's essentially a god, and look at the effort he's going through to try to please her and comfort her. You know, I mean, come on, man. Wonder. Hmm. No one dislikes you. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. No, <laughs> in voluntary response in the amygdala, they can't help but make me. Are you? Listen to my amygdala is synthetics. <laughs> oh yeah, I there's no chemistry here, is there? Idiots. I'm just saying, they were fuck it. I don't know what's in this, but it is not happy. <laughs> you have failed, robot man. Mr. Stark would like to avoid the possibility of another public incident. I know he mentioned Stark, but I think he wouldn't do this unless he also wanted to protect her. This is about what he wants. What do you want? Exactly. For people to see. Besides. How did people not see the chemistry here? Like what? You know, people are like, oh, they never hinted at this. Like, you're fucking idiots. I'm sorry, man. I'm going to keep banging that drum. I don't know how you saw that scene and didn't realize there's some smoke coming, man. They were fucking. Cat needs her help. Come on. Clint. You know what's interesting? She was willing to go with him, right? See that? She was going to go with him. Then she comes back. Then she has second thoughts because she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to betray him, you know? It's easier to betray him if he's not in the room is what I'm saying. Yeah, we gotta go. Yeah. See, now she hesitates. She wasn't hesitating before. There's a certain loyalty here that's keeping her in, in this room. Problems. Gotta help me, Wanda. What you want to milk and go to Gotta help me, Wanda. That comes back, of course. And here we go. That's enough. Let him go. I'm leaving. I can't let him. I'm sorry. This shows right here, by the way, one on one, she's more powerful. They will never stop being afraid of me. And that's what he's afraid of, right? I can't control their fear. He cares. Only my own. You know, it's funny she said that I can't control their fear, only my own. And I suppose that's true. I think it's the thing she can't control is her trauma. I think she's okay handling her fear. She can't control her trauma. She, she can't control her pain, you know? That's her issue. Wanda, I think you're her vision's feelings. You locked me in my room. Okay, first, that's an exaggeration. Second... You know, that where um, she, he talked about her vision's feelings, she completely avoided that and just talked to him directly. We're still friends, right? Friends are no hard to hit me. <laughs> You were pulling your punches. I'm pausing here. I find that a very interesting line there. Now, obviously, they're fighting their friends. In most cases, you know, Black Panther, not necessarily. But in most cases, um, they're fighting their friends. And she says you're pulling your punches. She says that as a criticism. What's interesting about that, think about that. Now, she doesn't mean fight to kill, right? 
Which means when she goes into a fight, she's not trying to kill anybody. She's just trying to subdue them, it, whatever it takes, like break a bone, knock them out, cast them outside the, the your bubble, whatever. She's just trying to subdue them. She's not trying to kill anybody. Think back to WandaVision. I'm you know up to episode three so far. When she ejects Monica, she could have ejected Monica so hard that she went into space. She could have ejected her so hard she smashed into the ground and splattered like a fucking pancake. She did. She ejected her, but maybe took the wind out of her when she landed, but it wasn't going to do any serious damage. So she's not trying to kill anybody. That's her speed, whether she's going against friends or she's going against enemies. No matter who she's going against, her speed is subdue, not kill. You know, you could, and when I first remember watching this theater, I think about, well, what is she trying to do? Get them to kill each other? That's just, I remember having that passing thought. That's not what she means at all. She means she only ever fights at one speed because she's a defensive fighter. She's not an offensive fighter. I'm sorry. It's as I said. I'm not saying anything. I'm just, what's up? <laughs> And here we go to Infinity War. Before I get into this, I pause it. Um, I will freely admit, since I've watched it at home like uh, 20, 30 times, however long it's been, I always skip these scenes with uh, Wanda and Vision. Sometimes I go from action to action. I just watch all the action scenes. And some of the exposition I like where they have the good jokes and you know, good, you know, cool reactions and shit like that. But um, So I can get to Infinity War in maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Infinity War is pretty much wall-to-wall, -wall, though. You know, <laughs> so... Um, Endgame, I can get through Endgame in a, in a solid hour, like, because I'll skip a lot of the bullshit. But I, I always skip the, the, these scenes. I go straight to where, you know, Vision gets attacked. So it had been a good, probably two years since I'd actually heard the dialogue. And when I was screen recording, of course, I, you know, I was sitting here for the screen recording trying to just capture the scenes with Wanda. So I saw them. And I was very intrigued by some of the dialogue. Like, I hadn't, like, just in seeing the theater, I hadn't processed it. I'd never watched it at home. So there's some good shit in here. So let's go ahead and get to it. Is, is it I love that she always calls him Fizz, by the way. Is it its speed? I, wonder, I don't wonder if she does that in WandaVision. I don't think she does. I think she says Vision. I don't know. Different writers, of course. That's a nice hotel room. I get the impression that for these two weeks they were together in this hotel room, he was tearing that ass up! <laughs> Here you. Meow. I really, really, I don't. Let me finish my thought. Ship them, okay? But then let me go to the second thought I had immediately, which I always feel like I got to qualify this. I don't ship characters. I watch a lot of TV shows. I don't ship characters. It's not my thing. I don't give a shit about romances, you know, and, and fictional romances. I ship these two a lot. I love their chemistry. I love their relationship. I really, really ship them. Two both made promises. Not to each other. It's the only good romance in the MCU that I can think of. Two years, we stormed. A lot of the early romances from the the original Avengers, they broke up. You know, I don't know. I, but the first Cap I and uh, uh, Agent Carter. I, I, I mean, I, think, I don't know. I, I, I never really did anything for it. <laughs> stay. Real. I love it. He's like, "Fuck this! You know, just stay with me. We can both run away together." Like the goody good two shoes is trying to break the rules now. Vision cared about breaking rules until it came time to fuck. I'm overstepping. And what I was talking over was where they were talking about for two years they've been sneaking away every chance they get. Somehow secretly communicating with each other. Probably her using her mind powers. Send him a mental message. Hey, you want to hook up this weekend? <laughs> I say again. <laughs> They were fucking for two weeks. Vision, if that's true, then maybe going isn't the best idea. Again, defensive. See this? Again, okay, consistent character. Basis. Pausing. Mark. I just want to pause it here. Uh, consistent characterization. The second there is, like, major danger, fuck that. Fuck going back. Stay here with me. Let's get a castle. Let's dig in. Put our entrenchments up and just be defensive. And we'll fuck anybody up if they try to cross our wall. Otherwise, we'll stay here. We ain't gonna fuck with nobody. We're gonna be safe. This is Wanda right here. This right here is Wanda. Very consistently throughout the entire run of her being on the MCU. 
And see, when she has to, she will fuck somebody up. She will go on the offensive tactically. She just won't go on the offensive strategically. You see the difference? And again, she's still trying to run away here, you know. She's not trying to finish him off or anything. She's like, let's get the fuck out of here. This is laughable. I, I get where he's coming from. I'm actually getting emotional. Holy shit. This is laughable that she would leave him. Because she ain't fucking leaving him. I was getting emotional. Like, that surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. Just the, the idea that he would be like, please leave me because he loved her so much. And she'd be like, "Get kiss my ass because I'm not going because she loves him so much. I'm telling you, man, I ship these two. Now, if you want to talk about half ass romance, there's this one right here, man. <laughs> Now that's a half ass romance. Now this right here is a crucial point. Pausing, Mark. This is the third time in the MCU that Wanda is going to sacrifice what she wants most for the greater good. For the greater good, you know. In the first instance was in Age of Ultron when... She risked her life and her brother's life to save the people in the city and, and save the world. Like, she's in the world, so that's kind of like, okay, that's a no-brainer. But her brother is like, look, look, let's get the fuck out of here. And she's like, no, we need to hold this till we get everybody off the, the rock. Actually, now that I think about it, no, it wasn't saving the world at that point because Tony could destroy the rock. It's just they wanted to get everybody off before he did it, right? To save innocent lives, right? So she stayed there and protected the core. Risking her brother's life because she wanted to get all the innocent people off the rock. And that decision cost her everything, cost her her brother. And so she made that choice and, and to save innocent lives and it cost her her brother. Second time was during Civil War. She risked her relationship with Vision, which was just a budding relationship at that time. You know how fragile those things are when you're just going out with somebody very seriously doubt they've had sex yet so but they there's something there they know there's something there she risked that to go help captain america she put that in jeopardy now it didn't really risk any lives at that point but she did risk her relationship with vision to go help captain america now here the third time she has one job in infinity war stay by vision side to protect him from anybody coming in until they can get that fucking stone out of his head. She has to stay by his side no matter what's happening on the battlefield. She has to stay by his fucking side. The bad guys knew that. And they were waiting. They were fucking waiting for her to leave. Like, they wanted things to get so bad that Wanda would leave to protect everybody else, the rest of the Avengers and people in Wakanda, and leave Vision unprotected. If she leaves him, it, it could lead to his death. So here she is. Here's the decision point. <laughs> This right here is really going to turn the tide of the battle. This is too much for the people on the battlefield to handle. And she sees it. Here she is making the decision again for the third time. Okoye and Black Widow are about to die here, along with a lot of other people. She left the fucking vision side, went to the battlefield to protect her. She up there all this time. She's on. <laughs> I love that line. It. But here it is. Exactly. Right here. By leaving Vision's side, it leads directly to his death. It would have been a lot harder for everybody else in Thanos to get up into this fucking building. There would have been more time they would have seen it coming, more people could have converged faster. <laughs> Vision being forced out of this room and onto the battlefield cost him his life. Trying to protect her friends, she lost what she wanted the most. For the second time, she lost it. Could have been three times, but she made that decision three times. But for the second time, she lost the person she loved the most by trying to be selfless and trying to help other people. Now, I count this here as a fourth time, even though it's really an extension of third time. She had made the choice before. So she wouldn't be forced into this choice. This is still a choice. She's kind of, he's kind of forcing her hand here, right? But I consider this a fourth time she makes the decision to lose what... This time it's not even risk losing. She's going to lose what she loves most to protect everybody else. 
So for a fourth time, she makes a choice. She's going to kill the man she loves to save everybody else. It shouldn't be you, but it is. It's all right. You could never hurt me. And it's actually that, like, trembling lip gets me every fucking time, man. I'll tell you, the thing I did not expect was to be as emotional as I am. Seeing just her scenes without the distraction of the rest of the MCU has brought, the, brought this home to me more than I realized it would. Like, this has gotten me really fucking emotional. Because it's one thing to just see this scene in isolation. But having seen the cut-up of just her scenes, and especially her scenes with Vision, all together, back-to-back, -to -back, really drives this home for me. What's interesting about this scene is, like, Thanos means what he says. He really means this. He's, he's not just bullshitting. He takes time to comfort her. And of course, she ain't trying to hear this shit. She's too heartbroken right now to attack him, but... Now is no time for me. I can't even imagine the pain of losing somebody you love twice, like this, back to back. The second time even worse than the first time. Because look how just how brutally and how coldly he does his shit. Here's what's interesting about this right here, by the way. I just noticed it this time through. She had come over and crawled over to Vision. And was just, like, sitting over him, just mourning, I'm sure. She wasn't trying to do anything. Like, the, the, you know, because before I was like, anytime I'd ever seen this before, it's just like, well, everybody's getting dusted. That's pretty bad. I never noticed. It never really sunk in that she had crawled across probably about 12, 15 feet because he knocked her pretty far away from Vision. She wasn't trying to get up and attack uh, Thanos or anything. Any of this shit. Everything else that was happening. All she did was she crawled across the ground to go to him and sit by him. And then that's when she gets dusted. Okay, now the final scene. This is an end game when she stomps his ass. The only person on the entire field, and there's a lot of uh, memes about this on Twitter at the time, about hey, he has to rain fire at her because like she <laughs> can't fucking handle her, man. She is the only person. Not even Captain Marvel could knock his ass around like she did. He was, she was fucking him up, boy. And, and that just shows. And this is a pattern. This is what we also saw in Age of Ultron. You know, she loses somebody. She makes a decision to risk everything. And then she loses the thing she loves the most. She gets revenge. And then after she gets revenge, she, she has nothing left. She's broken. You know? And if it wasn't for Vision, who knows what would have happened to her after Age of Ultron. And I think that that, that friendship with him, like, you know, helped her. He was probably there for her through her time of mourning, which probably took a year or two. And obviously nothing will mention at that time. We don't see it as off screen, but like he was there for it. He, he helped her through that. There's nobody like that now. As I mentioned before, she loses Captain America, the only other Avenger, I think, that, that we get any implication that anybody who's close to her is protective of her. Everybody likes her, of course. Vision even says that himself that everybody likes her. But the only other Avenger we see that like has any kind of kinship with her is Captain America. And guess what? He bailed. He made a choice to bail on her. This is her get revenge phase. You took everything from me. I, I tell you, man, that shit is terrifying. You will. <laughs> but now she wanted this to last. What's up, bitch? <laughs> He's like, help! Help! <laughs> I fucking love it. Now, I think this is interesting right here. This is at Tony Stark's funeral. Notice who she said with, of course. Uh, she's, I'm sure she spent some time with her on the right. I don't feel like she, there was like a championship going on there. But they were, you know, they were, they were probably like, you know, they, they at least spent the most time with each other, you know, other than, than like Captain America. And of course, like she was, she was close to Captain America. It's interesting to me, by the way, that Captain America is standing in front of, way in front of him, you know, away from them. But now he's gone. And of course, uh, Black Widow, she's out of here. And it is also interesting that, that Bucky and Falcon are going to have their own show. And I predict 
that and their show, of course, is going to take place after WandaVision. It was going to take place before WandaVision, by the way, in the original order of events. But WandaVision was further along in shooting. So now it's going to take place after. I don't know which when they would have done this. Like if, if they if they planned to do it before this, maybe they wouldn't have. But I think now I predict that there will be dialogue talking about how they kind of didn't check in on her. They you know that they, they didn't like she just kind of like drifted away and they didn't really like follow up and they didn't stay in contact with her and they feel guilty about that. I have a feeling there's gonna be some dialogue there because those are the only two people that you know she has any kind of kinship with other than than Captain America. I also notice. Falcon puts an arm on, on Bucky's shoulder, but she's standing with them and she's standing apart from them. And I think, I don't know if they intended that or not, but I just, I find that interesting. So, what do you make of all this? Well, I think that having four times in the MCU made the choice to risk what she loves and twice losing what she loves for other people. Being selfless, in other words, I think she's done with all that. She's done being selfless. She's done thinking of other people first. And now it's about her. It's all about her. I also think this whole be protective, be in a bubble, that nobody can come in and fuck with me, control the environment, in other words, comes from what we've seen throughout the entire course of the MCU. You know, she wants to... She wants to be protected. She wants to retreat to a castle. She wants to be in a defensive posture, you know, just like, you know, just this whole thing of being defensive, you know. She's not like this. She's open-fisted. She's defensive. She's not offensive, right? You tie that all up and we see what happens in WandaVision, which is why I think she's a big bad of WandaVision, you know. And I think the reasons for being a big bad in WandaVision are very, are, you know, very understandable if you dig through the MCU. You know, she's, she's now protected. She's controlling everything around her. Nobody can get in and fuck with her. Nobody can hurt her. She doesn't have to face her trauma. She can run away from her trauma. And there's no chance of any new trauma. Because nobody can get in and fuck with her. She's got an iron-fisted control over everything around her. She's in a retreated castle. And she will never again make the choice to risk what she loves for other people. I think that's going to be the final battle of the series. She will... Be confronted with the choice. Lose what she loves, Vision. You know, the fabrication of Vision. Because I think the only way to get rid of this bubble is to get rid of Vision. She has to make the choice to lose Vision to resolve everything. And, you know, that's going to be a very difficult choice for her, as we've seen. So, that's what I believe, having gone back through all this. And I do think the way the series is going to end, like, they're going to try to invade the bubble. And Because we see a couple scenes in the, really quick scenes in the trailer where it's talking about, well, we're going to have to defend our town, you know. They're defending the town from the invasion of the good guys, right? So, yeah, this has been very interesting. I suggest you guys go back and you comb through the footage yourself, you know, because it's, it's, it's good shit. There's almost a movie's worth. There's about 60 to 75 minutes of just her and, you know, her and then later her and Vision. It's good stuff. 